What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a simple Hello World tutorial. Um, so I have a Flask tutorial directory uh, in my computer. And I'm just going to edit. I just call it week 13. You can call it whatever. Um, and I'm just going to cheat here and just going to paste in the Hello World thing. So just go like that. Uh, boom, Control C. Just going to paste it in. And uh, OK. So let me first run it just to make sure it runs. And then uh, I'll explain what's going on. So to run it, all you have to run is Python week 13.py, just the name of the um, just the name of the script. And when I hit enter, if it runs, it'll say running on blah 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 blah. So this uh, is a IP. This is a uh, IP address that's local to my computer. So if I copy this into my browser on my computer, I think I have this pulled up. Ah. In my browser. I will, it will just say hello world. So if I reload it, it'll say hello world. So this means it's actually working. Um, so what just happened here? Um, what happened was that this amount of Flask code, this is just importing something, right? It's just boilerplate. Um, this is the main function here, app run, just keep this. So this function um, defines a function hello. You can really call this any function you want. And this just returns hello world to like the requester. And this weird, uh, ampersand thingy um, is called a route. So this says that if someone requests slash, if someone goes to your web server and goes to first slash, which is like no, you don't put anything after it, then run this function. Ugh. Then simply run this function and return whatever you want to the user. So it just returns hello world. So if I go here, um, when I visit the website, slash is the like address, right? So you usually don't have to say slash. So slash means I just visit it, no HTML, no anything. Um, it returns hello world. So this simply just does a, um, if you look at the network, when I load, it simply does a get request of, um, of the, the slash. And the response is just a string hello world. That's it, just a string hello world. And if you look at it, it's fairly straightforward. It's just, it just returns a string you want. And the nice thing about this is that you don't need to um, print the HTTP headers or anything, right? Remember, like, if you're printing this with CGS, you have to just print content type, whatever, new line, whatever. So the one nice thing about a web framework like Flask is that it encapsulates that for you. So uh, the, the semantics behind this is whatever you return out of the function is what the user gets, no extra kind of crap. There's a special mode in Flask which is called debug equals true. I'll put all this code online later. Actually, it's already online now. But um, if you run debug equals true, the cool thing is that when it runs the server, it automatically detects if you change the file. So if you change the file, it actually reloads the server. So you always it's like you're always getting the latest version. Because remember, this code is on your server. And you actually have to restart the server every time you, um, you change your code, because the server is just running with whatever copy you had originally. So the nice thing about this is that when you change the code, so let's say I have hello world here. And if I say this to goodbye world, and I save the file, as soon as I save the file, this thing says detected change in week 13 py reloading restarted reloader. That's really nice because then um, your your thing just reloads. Um, I don't think it works for everything, but for most scripts it works. So, um, but if you really want to be paranoid, you should kill it and then restart it um, because the server side code has to be reloaded every time. Um, so if I go reload, it says goodbye world now has my new version. Um, so already you can see that using a framework like Flask gives you a bit of more flexibility because you don't need to write all the headers and everything. Um, so the next thing it gives you that's really nice is these nice URL strings. Remember, a big question earlier was, how do we get URLs to not be all ugly? Because right now, what we have to do is we have to pass in like blah.py, question mark, name equals Alice, and age equals 21, or whatever. Right? You have to pass in all these crazy things to URL because so far, in our basic CGI scripts, the URL has to be the file name of the script that you're loading. Um, it has to be the file name of the script. So then you end up with something really ugly, right? Like your CGI bin, blah, whatever, right? Or your login script is like this. And it looks super ugly. What you really want is just someone to visit something like blah, 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 logins, login slash, or home slash, or something like really clean and nice. You don't want it to have to like have your whole file name in there. So in a traditional CGI scheme, there's not really a good way to do that without some like crazy twiddling around. Because in CGI, all your stuff is just a file. They're just running files directly. But another really nice thing that web application frameworks provide for you um, is called routing or URL redirection. So for example, if I just 
uh, in this round, if I say, uh, I will say a thing called uh, uh, user. Let's just say user, okay? And then we'll say, hello, user, like that. Okay, so does this reload? Let's make sure it auto reloads. Oh, wow, it died. <laughs> you function, oh, I named this function the same thing. So the annoying thing is you have to name functions in Python, but you can't have duplicate names, obviously. So I just have to call this user as a name function. Okay, I'm restarting it. And now if I visit the original, I say goodbye world. Now, lo and behold, if I just say user right here, I just type in user, it actually goes to that function and executes it. This is like astounding because you can't really do this to CGI, right? This actually is not loading a file called user in a script or whatever. This is actually just going to my function called user. Um, to be clear, uh, this is the route. So the function name has nothing to do with it. So ignore this, I can call this whatever, right? I can call this something useless. Is this die again? No. Um, the important thing is not the function name, is this magical thing up here called app.route. And I just said, if you visit the website slash user, that string, the web application framework knows to take that URL and then pass it to this function. So that it runs this function that says, hello user. So now you can start seeing how it's starting to be more powerful because you don't need to actually have multiple scripts, right? You can actually have URLs be as nice and clean as you want them to be. So this is something that you can't obviously go with CGI. Um, you know, potential downside of this is that maybe a bit harder to debug because you don't actually know what's going on behind the scenes. So the, the plumbing underneath in the framework is taking care of rewriting all the URLs for you. Yep, John. So what is the plumbing? Like what is happening when you- That's a great question. That's a great question. And the answer is I have no clue because that's the whole thing about web application frameworks. The answer is I have no clue. And also if you don't understand Python, whoa, if you don't know Python really well, this line is like magical. Like what the heck is this thing? And if I spell it wrong, it will like destroy myself and I'll break. So this is part of the fragility of using a framework is one is that there seems to be this magical line here that if you don't understand Python, you don't understand. You just copy and paste and say that. And the other one is you don't actually know what's going on behind the scenes. Um, I suspect what's going on behind the scenes is that Flask is a framework that actually sets up a web server for you. And if it sets up a web server, then it grabs the request URLs. Um, it grabs the URLs of all the requests coming to the server because it's its own server. So if, you, if it owns the server, it can grab the URLs and parse it and grab all the components. And then I'm sure you know the URL is just a big string and it parses off, it chops off the, um, it chops off the domain name, it chops off this part right after it. And then it passes that into a function that tries to go and match up with one of these things. And once it matches up, it jumps into that function. So I think that's basically what happens. So if you actually pass in an invalid thing, like blah, blah, it'll say not found. So the web framework tries to get that string and tries to pass it in any function. If it doesn't, it'll explode and say not found. Yep. Can you try something? Oh, no, well, I thought you said, you said debugging on, right? Uh, yeah. I think the not found is just, that's just a debug message. Um, so the debugging on is useful if you have a if you have a error in your Python code. It'll print out like what your problem is in Python code. Let's see if it actually works. Let's put an error in the Python code. Let's say um, x equals one divided by zero. So this should throw an exception. Yep, perfect. So it's actually really nice. So that another nice thing is if you have debug on, it will uh, if you if you're running your Python. Because remember how like if you don't have debug on, it just says 500 error and it's really annoying, right? And you can't know what's going on. Um, the nice thing is here if the debugging is on. Um, it will actually give you a nice printout. It says, is there a division error? It looks like the, the stack trace of the, um, of the error. So you kind of know, oh, wow, I have a division error on this line. And you comment it out and reload, and it's good.